Hello, welcome back to Time Series Analysis. Now, today, we are going to talk about state-based models. So this is actually what I find is one of the most inter interesting elements of this course, particularly because we get to the so-called common filter in just a moment, and we'll also give you a small example at the end. But first, let's just discuss state-based models, what they are, what they can be used for, and so forth. So what we've done so far is to look at a process that we observe directly. So we observe the states directly without any uncertainty. In practice, however, many systems are such that you do observe them, but you observe them indirectly and you have potential noise in the observation. And you may not observe the entire state, but just part of the state. Say that you're looking at the temperature of a house, you have a thermometer someplace here, maybe there, but you don't have it everywhere. So you have an underlying model, that is the house, and then you have some observations somehow. And the question is then how to make a model for the house, but that's a different story. But we have what in general a full description of the dynamical system, say the heat dynamics of a house, where at x t, the state of time t depends on a function of the previous state plus the function of an input plus potentially some noise. Now, the observation equation indicated by this arrow here is then a nonlinear, potentially nonlinear function of the input given as the output yt plus some observation noise. And the goal here is to reconstruct, as in update our estimates of where we are given new observations. So whenever we observe yn, say, we want to say, well, then what more do we then know about the state of the system at that time? But we also want to make predictions of the future. That's all what we want. Now, since this is a linear time series course, we will have these as only linear functions, but this is a general state space representation. The big difference to what we've done so far is that it only depends on the previous state, which means it's also fulfills the Markov property. Just a couple of examples. I mentioned the temperature of a house. It could be a temperature of anything, but what is typical there is that you measure the temperature somewhere and you think of it representing the entire thingy. Now, another case would be, well, say the precision observations, they could be noisy. Now with GPS, they're not as noisy, but you should also keep in mind that GPS fails, so whenever we have other systems, you need to have an understanding of the uncertainties. So the idea is, given many observations that have some noise, we may be able to get a combine that into a better estimate of the position. In biologic system, what is well, medical research, one very important class of models are the so-called pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic models, where the kinetics are, you can see how is the drug diluted in the body, and the dynamics are pharmacodynamics, how is the drug then active where it is. Now, I hope that you can follow me in thinking that when you want to describe that, if you inject something somewhere, it's not everywhere immediately. It takes some time to get through the system. On the other hand, when you make observations of the concentration profile, you may do that in the other arm, but you're not doing it everywhere. So you're measuring somewhere with some noise, and delays, and other things that you have to include in your model when you're doing the modeling. So what we have to do here is that we have to consider the physics of the system that we're looking at. So what are the governing states that we have to control, say for the blood or for the body? We have the bloodstream and then we have the tissue and maybe we need more for the local about where the injection is and, and other things. Again, it depends on understanding the physical or physiological uh, system that we're modeling. This is what we call going towards having a white box model where we try to describe as much of the model as we know. But on the other hand, as said before, there are other things where we say we don't want to model every single vessel, blood vessel in the body. So we also want to use, you can say, some of the noise can be used to kind of reflect the things that are not covered by the model. A general thing is that you can take any mt order differential equation and then you can formulate that as m first order 
differential equations. The typical thing is that you take a acceleration mo model for the second order derivative acceleration of something, and then you write that as two coupled first order differential equations. And the other thing in that regard is whenever you do observe a system, it's almost always in discrete time. If it's equidist equidistant, then we're in the scope of this, but we can also handle non equidistant uh, equi distance samplings. But you should also keep in mind that when you do this change from continuous time to discrete time, you may also change the parameterization in the model. We'll get back to that. Um, but let's first just see how that happens for a simple differential equation. If we write dx dt equals a times x, then I hope that you all know what the solution is to this equation, namely that x at time t equals some x0, let's call it that, times the exponential of a times t. Now, if you want to do this in discrete time, what we're looking at, we could say that if we look at x at time t plus delta t, and we just plug that in up there, then we have x naught times exponential of a times t plus delta t. Now, if we look at this, we can take the sum in here and split it out. So we have that as x naught, the exponential of a times t. And we multiply that by the exponential of a times delta t. Now what we'll see here is that we'll identify the first bit here. That is exactly what we have up here as xt. So at xt plus delta t, what we have is what we already got x of t. And then we have it times the exponential of a times the sampling period delta t. So if you want to write this in a discrete time manner, a similar expression to this would be as at x k plus 1 equals a matrix a. Or, I mean, in a multivariate setting, it's a matrix. It, in a univariate setting, it's just a scalar times the previous value xk. So that's the analog between the two. So this a here has this interpretation here. So, and this also defines, if it's a multivariate system, this also defines the exponential function of a matrix. But here you can see easily see that you have a number here, and you have an exponential of a product of two numbers. So it's a totally different representation of the same system underneath. 